Welcome to the next part of our Aston Martin Valkyrie series. Today we want to have a closer look at engine and gearbox. When Adrian Newey was starting with the general layout of the car in autumn 2014, the task was to use a combustion engine that can produce around 1000 horsepower alone. So he was thinking about using a turbocharged V6 engine or a naturally aspirated V12. Actually the same question like 30 years ago with the Jaguar XJ220. The V6 itself is much smaller and compact, but because it's turbocharged it needs additional piping and a lot more cooling. So Newey decided for a high revving, naturally aspirated V12. It's a larger engine and also much longer, which affects the torsional stiffness of the car since it's a fully stressed member, but the overall package would be smaller and it sounds better. When Red Bull came together with Aston Martin later on, who also had their own mid-engine sports car concept, discussions started again to use a turbocharged V6 or V8 or even a current production V12 of Aston Martin. But that was not what Newey and his team wanted and they could convince Aston Martin to agree to the cooperation but with an engine from an external supplier. Red Bull went to Cosworth and gave them the task to build the ultimate expression of the combustion engine. Their requirements were high and partly contradicting, because they should build a high revving, naturally aspirated V12, which weighs only around 200 kg, is a structural member of the car and meets current standards for emissions and durability. Cosworth is a very experienced partner for road and race engines with more than 60 years of experience. And so the first three cylinder prototype, so one quarter of the Valkyrie engine, was running four months after kickoff. They could develop the hardware of the engine and improve combustion. After 14 months, the first V12 was running and it had to pass the same durability tests like Cosworth's more civil road engines. 200 hours of hard running, which equals to 100,000 kilometers of road use. The resulting engine is now a 6.5 liter 65 degree V12 which produces 740 newton meters at 7000 rpm, 1000 horsepower at 10500 rpm and has a rev limit at 11100 rpm. That's 154 horsepower per liter. So imagine a naturally aspirated 2 liter road car engine with 308 horsepower. Block, cylinder heads, sump and structural cam covers are castings. All other major parts of the engine are machined from solid metal. There are titanium conrods and F1 spec pistons. Good thing about this expensive way of production is accuracy and small tolerances. That way these parts have better consistency in production and can be optimized for more performance and less weight. The crankshaft for example starts as a solid steel bar which has a diameter of 170 mm and is 775 mm long. After the 6 month long machining and treating process, 80% of the material have been machined away and the result is a crankshaft that is 50% lighter than the one on the Aston Martin 177. In terms of combustion, one of the key problems was to combine high power with the Euro 6 emission standard. High power requires laminar flow into the engine. Reduced emissions require turbulent flow. Six weeks after kickoff, Cosworth simulation showed that it could be possible and the three-cylinder mule engine confirmed that later on. Also the fact that it's a fully structural member was another challenge. The Valkyrie is a two-seater, so the monocoque and hence mounting points for the engine are relatively far apart. The engine itself is pretty slim and long which reduces torsional stiffness. And different to other car projects, the engine is not just helping with stiffness, it's actually the only link between front and rear. Just like an F1 car. If the engine bends and moves during cornering, you don't just lose torsional stiffness, you also lose power because of higher internal resistance. So the structural part of the engine was another major challenge. The gearbox of the car is another milestone. Like described in my previous part, it's also a structural member and the pushrod rear suspension mounts directly to it. Lower wishbone and drive shafts are at the same height to make space for the massive diffuser tunnels underneath. And like an F1, the whole rear of the car mounts to the gearbox. 
knew he wanted to avoid a dual clutch gearbox because they are relatively heavy and physically large, which would hurt aerodynamics. So they decided for a 7-speed twin barrel gearbox. Odd and even gears have their own selector barrel, so it basically works like a dog box, which is usually known to be very uncomfortable. A lot of thought went into the use of an electric motor. It is now used for slow speeds like parking, it works as a reverse, so the gearbox itself can be smaller and this electric motor also works as a damper within the gearbox to make shifts more comfortable. Furthermore, it can start the engine and recuperate energy under braking. So the electric motor has a total of 5 jobs to do. And because of that, the whole drivetrain can be a lot smaller, simpler, more comfortable and quicker. Partner for this gearbox is the experienced gearbox manufacturer Ricardo. So the Valkyrie is a car design that is unlike anything else. Newey isn't completely satisfied with the results as he says, because of the direct connection between engine and chassis, the noise is a bit above target, the luggage space is less than what they wanted because they needed some more space to meet emission standards. But overall he's satisfied with the result and they created a car that raises the bar for future sports cars by quite a bit. How do you like the Aston Martin Valkyrie? Let me know in the comments below.